I'm Micah Smith, and this is AA Illustrates. In this AA Illustrates, we're gonna be taking a look at building your very first Automation 360 bot, okay? So if you have no Automation Anywhere experience or even no RPA experience, this is great for you. If you do have RPA experience, that's cool. This is also a really great place to start just to get familiar with the Automation Anywhere user interface. So let's take a look at what's required before we can actually get hands-on with the software. So the first off is having a Windows operating system. This may seem really basic to you. You're already on your work computer, you have Windows, that's cool. Uh, if you don't, you'll need to make sure that you're using a Windows desktop or server operating system. So that means everything Windows Server 2019, 2016, 2012, all the way down to Windows 10, Windows 8, if you're actually using that and Windows 7 okay so you want to make sure you're on one of those if you're using uh, OS X or, or Mac um, you can use VirtualBox and you can download a virtual machine you can also use parallels and that allows you to basically run a virtual Windows machine from within your uh, your Apple operating system the next component that we have to have is a bot creator license. Now, a bot creator license can come in two ways, right? You could have that if your organization has uh, Automation 360 and they've given you a bot creator license. You'll just want to make sure that you have that. That will enable you to go and create and test bots. If you don't have that or if you don't have access to Automation 360, you can do the exact same thing on Community Edition. So you'll want to go and register for Community Edition. We'll have links for that in the description below but you'll wanna go and register for Community Edition and get your machine set up so that you have your bot creator license and you're able to go. The last component to this is having a bot agent installed. Now the bot agent is a small executable that gets installed on your machine uh, after you've already registered, right? So you, you go through the process of registering, you've logged in, you would then uh, add the device to your control room and at that point, the bot agent would be installed. It'll walk you through that process. But the bot agent is really what connects your local machine to the central control room. And as we you know, do some testing and we modify bots and as we test our bots, uh, at that point, the control room is essentially sending that task down to your local machine. Your local machine runs it. And that's how we see the attended bot testing that we're doing. So if you need help with that setup, we've got another video that's linked below uh, that will walk you through the process of getting set up on Community Edition and getting your bot agent installed and validating all of that. Um, but for right now, we're gonna assume that all of that's together. So if you need to stop now and go watch one of those videos, go do that. Um, but we're gonna assume all of that's together and we're gonna go straight into the process of logging into the control room and starting to build our first bot. So I've switched over to the control room login and I'm using community edition here just so everyone can follow along. Uh, I filled in my username and password and I'll hit login. So this takes me to the home page of the control room and here I can see lots of different stuff from creating my first bot, opening IQ bot, bot insights, things like that. We're going to be doing that exact same thing. We're going to create our first bot. So if you're on this homepage, you can click on Create Bot. If you're not on this homepage, you can go to this Bots tab over here and then go to My Bots, and that will allow you to create a new bot. Now, the other thing I wanna bring up real quick, notice that I've got a green check mark next to the uh, you know computer icon up here in the top right. I can also go to the My Devices, and I see that it says that my machine is connected, right? My device name is AA-NC Micah Smith, it shows that it's connected here. So you'll want to make sure that you've got that connected device. And uh, that's just the installation and validation of that bot agent. So uh, that was just a quick extra tip. One thing to validate. All right. So I'm back on the My Bots tab on the left-hand side here of my control room. And I'm going to click this Create New button. And when I click that, it's going to say, do you want to create a new bot, a new form, or a new process? I'm going to create a new bot. So it's gonna prompt me to give a name for my bot. Let's call this my first, oh, gotta spell it right. My first bot, and we'll hit create and edit. Okay, so it's gonna load up the user interface. Now, the really cool thing about Automation 360 is all of the bot development is done directly in the website, which is insanely cool to me. So I wanna break this down real quick. On the left-hand side, we have all of our actions and these are all packages of actions, right? So a package is basically just a collection of different actions, but these are all the tools that are available to us as bot builders 
to automate whatever task we're trying to automate. So if it's going to a website and clicking buttons or filling out a web form, there are actions that can help us with that. If it's going to an Excel spreadsheet and maybe looping through rows and reading data or updating data, there are packages to help us with that. So we can come through here and we can always look to see uh, what you know packages and actions are available. I can also search, right? If I don't exactly know, I might say web, right? And then I can see all stuff that's related to web or I might type Excel and I can see all of these actions and packages that are related to Excel. So this is what we'll be using as we start to build out our actual bot. Now, in the middle frame here, we have our bot building workbench. And, and here I'm on flow view. You can see by this underline here that I'm in flow view. And what that means is that when I build my bot, it's gonna build out like a visual flow chart, right? If you've seen Visio diagrams before, it's kind of this like, you know, a big block and then an arrow and then another block, a poor description. We'll see it here in a second. But uh, this is where I can build that out. I also have the ability to build in list view which if you're using Automation Anywhere version 10 or version 11, this is similar to the user interface that you saw there, but it's the exact same thing. It's just listed out as you know one little row per action as opposed to me having this flow view. Additionally, I can build in this dual mode where I can see both side by side. And this is where a lot of people find the most value because then they can you know take advantage of seeing the, the uh, flow view and see how everything is laid out, but still also see it in a more compact fashion as well. On the far right, we have our action details. And when I start to actually add actions to my bot or to my flowchart, I'll see that in the actions details pane on the far right side, that's where I can go and actually configure whatever action I've currently highlighted. So the really cool thing about this is that when you're building a bot, you're not coding things, right? You're, you're simply clicking and dragging. You're building out logic into a flowchart. And everything is, you know, select your configuration, do this drop down, fill out this one field. So it's not this thing where like you have to remember all this crazy syntax and you have to make sure that it all uh, is written exactly correct. It's very much designed to help you as you go through that process. So what we're gonna be automating today for our very first bot is just the login for a website, right? And this is a dummy website login. It actually doesn't go anywhere. It will just give you some information about how well you did when you actually uh, fill out the details. And so uh, we have a link to this in the description below, but I'm gonna try to automate on top of this website. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this link. So if you have the uh, description below, this is in there, copy the link to this page because our first action is gonna be to open this website, right? If we think through as we're building our bot, what would we do if we were doing that login as a human? Well, the first thing I would do is I would launch my browser uh, to go to that website. The next thing I would do would be to fill in my username or my email and then fill in my password and then click submit. We want our bot to do those exact same things. And so as you're building out your bot, think about that exact same way of processing, right? If I was gonna explain this to someone else who had to do what I'm trying to do here, right? I need to tell them all the steps that they would need to follow. And in the same way, that's what we're gonna do for our bot. So to start off with actually launching that application, uh, I'm gonna go to the browser package right here. So on the far left-hand side, I've got browser, and I've got a bunch of actions within the browser package. And so I'm gonna grab the one that says open and drag that over into my flowchart. Now you can see I've got, you know, kind of the, the dotted lines outlined showing me where it's valid to drop that. And I can drop it on either side, it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna put it right here. And notice that we have our first action showing up in our bot. And on the far right hand side here, we can see uh, basically some parameters that we have to fill out. Hey, I see you wanna open a browser. Do you want that to be in a new window? Do you want it to be an existing tab? What do you wanna open? So for me, I'm gonna say it needs to be a new window and I'm gonna say that I want it to be in Google Chrome. Right, And I'm doing that because we'll see later that Google Chrome actually can show up in the name of the window. And so I wanna be very specific about which browser I'm using. If you're using Edge or if you're using something else, just be consistent when you do this, but I'm gonna be using Google Chrome. Now, the link to open. I can say exactly where I want that window to be open to uh, when it launches, right? So instead of me waiting for the window to open and then filling in the URL that way, I can do it all in one step. And so we copy that from the, uh, from the description, 
We're gonna put that from the clipboard into the link to open field, and then we'll hit save. Now, at this bot, at this point, our bot is doing something, right? And we can test that by hitting this run button. So I'm gonna hit run. And what's happening at this point is this bot is being deployed to my local machine. Now, if this is the first time that you've deployed a bot, just like it is for me, you can see that it's downloading dependencies. And what that means is that the tools that are needed for that bot to run are being loaded onto my local machine and then the bot is being executed. Now, when I run this bot again, I'll see that those dependencies don't have to be downloaded because I've already downloaded them. So subsequent runs will get faster. Okay, great, so our bot is working, right? We saw that it opened a website. If I go back to my Automation Anywhere interface, it says, hey, your bot has run successfully, right? It didn't actually do much because we didn't tell it to do anything yet, but so far, so good. Uh, the next things we wanna do is we want to tell the bot that we wanna fill in an email address, fill in a password, and click sign in. So what I'm gonna do is back on our flowchart view here, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to this recorder package. And the recorder package allows me to simulate interaction on applications through their GUI. And that stands for Graphical User Interface. So if it's a website and I need to fill in a field or click a button, I would use the capture action, right? And if it's some other Windows native application, right? Let's say my organization has this like one application that someone built a long time ago, no one really knows who built it, but it's been around here forever. I could use the capture action to try to interface with that application. And it would let me, you know, insert text into fields or select stuff from drop downs and click buttons. So this is a great way for me to be able to interact with very visual applications on my, uh, on my machine. So for the object details for recorder, uh, it's gonna say, hey, what do you wanna interact with? And for me, I'm gonna say browser, right? If you were, you were working with some application, you wanna make sure that application is open and then you could use it. But for me, I'm working with a browser. So I'm gonna click this refresh icon. And when I do that, what's happening is my bot agent has now told this web page everything that's open on my machine that is a browser, right? So here I can scroll down here and I see every single window that I have open in Chrome. I'm gonna click on this one that says Automation Anywhere Google Labs dash login because that's the page we're trying to automate against. So at this point, I've told the action exactly what page I wanna automate against. If I click this capture object button, it's now gonna flip the focus of my page over to that window or that, uh, that application that I selected. So I'm on that application and notice that I've got these red boxes showing up on things, right? Do you see that as I kind of scroll around? I think it looks like that's showing up. So when I highlight over this email address, I can actually click that. And when I click it, what we're gonna see is this window comes up and it says, I'm recording everything that I know about that particular object on this page or on that application. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna record everything that it knows about it to allow me to determine how I wanna interact with it. And this is two parts here, right? The first is, these are all the object properties. This is what the Automation Anywhere client knows about that particular object on the page. It knows its HTML tag. It knows its DOM XPath, which is like basically where that object is within the page. It has all of these properties about that particular object. So it knows what it is, but it, I can also say here how I want to interact with it. So for the action here, I'm going to select the drop down and I'm going to say set text. Now, there's lots of different options I could take here. I could get some property if I wanted an HTML value or if I wanted to see how that text box was filled already, I could do that. I could click, I could double click, I could right click. For me, I'm gonna select set text. And when I select to set text, I can choose what text I wanna fill in there. So we're gonna do user at automation uh, anywhere.com. So it's gonna be user at automationanywhere.com, all lowercase, okay? And you fill in the same thing because we're gonna do this exercise together. So as you're doing this, it's user at automationanywhere.com. I can set additional parameters here. Like if I wanted to wait, like, hey, click in there and then wait between keystrokes so it looks more human, I could do that. Uh, we're not gonna mess with that for right now. So I'm just gonna hit save. 
Now we filled in the username. Let's do the same thing for the password. So I'm going to grab this capture step. I'm going to go back to browser on my object detail. From this drop down, I don't need to hit refresh again because it already knows about the same uh, web pages and, and tabs and things that I was working with last time. So I'm going to select that one that says previously selected Automation Anywhere Labs. I will click capture object again. And this time I'm going to highlight over the password. And again, I see that thing that's drawing all the red boxes. I'm going to click on password. And again, it's going to record everything that it knows about this particular object on this page. It says, hey, I know that this is a password as the type, and I can see all of the properties dealing with that. So it knows what it is. Now we need to say how we want to interact with it. So for the action, I'm going to select set text. Now, notice this time it looks a little bit different than it did the time before, right? When we did it before, I said set text, and then it just had this like field to fill in, and that was it. Because it is recognized that the HTML type is a password, it's suggesting that I use a credential here. And a credential is basically a secure value that I've stored on my control room. That goes a little bit beyond the scope of this particular lab or this particular demo that we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is select insecure tab here, or insecure string as the tab. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna type in, uh, it's gonna be capital A automation one, two, three. And it's giving me a warning here saying, hey, this value is not encrypted. I get that. That's fine. For the purposes of us just doing this demo for our very first build, that's okay. If this was a real production bot that I was going to be using, um, what I would probably do is store this value in the credential vault that's built into the Automation Anywhere control room. And then I could pull that value down whenever I needed it. And it's not going to be just displayed in plain text like this. All right, I'll hit save. The last thing we need to do is on this uh, same action, we're going to do the, con uh, the capture action here. Again, we'll select browser. We'll select the drop down for Automation Anywhere Labs dash login. And we'll click capture object one more time. And now if I hover over the sign in button, again, I see that red box. I'm going to click it. And just like the other two, it's going to record everything that it knows about that particular object. And then once again, I have my action. Now notice that my actions have changed a little bit. I don't have the append text or set text. And that's because it recognized that this object is a button. So those particular actions don't really make sense. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select click. And that will allow us to click the button and actually submit the login. So let's hit save here. And what I'm going to do is actually close that window. So I'm going to close the window that we had open, which was our Automation Anywhere Labs login. Because remember, our bot is going to launch that for us. And so we want to see if this bot can run end to end and automate that login. So I'm going to hit run. And again, the bot's going to be deployed to my local machine. Now, if there are any missing packages that we have, those would be downloaded. Otherwise, the bot's going to start running immediately. So it's launched the website. It's filled in. And we didn't really even get to show that very, very much because it was so fast. But it filled in the email address. It filled in the password. It clicked sign in. And then we got this pop-up. And the pop-up is just showing us, hey, the time between when you first filled out the email address and you clicked sign in was 0.8 seconds. So it was quite fast. Yours might be a little bit slower, a little bit faster. That's totally fine. It, it, it just really depends on how fast that was going on your machine. But there's lots of there can be some variation here. So nothing to worry about. So the bot has been able to uh, automate our login here. So we're good. We know that our bot worked. The last thing I want to show you, and I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'll leave this open for right now. I'm going to refresh the page and leave it open. The last thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to pop back here, right? And here we see our bot ran successfully. Now, if I needed to switch between applications or if I needed to open up Excel and then read data from a form, uh, from a Excel spreadsheet and fill that in, I could do all of that too, right? There's lots of different actions uh, for those and it kind of guides you through the process just like we saw here. Um, but for the purposes of this exercise, what I want to do is I'm going to go through and click. So I clicked on the top capture action and I'm going to shift click. Uh, so hold shift and then click uh, the three actions that I have. And what I'm going to do is this icon over here says disable all actions. And what that's going to do is essentially just make sure that those actually don't run. Because what I want to do is show you one other way that we could 
do some of our bots, especially those bots that have to deal with graphical user interfaces. So if we come up here in the top left, there's something that says recorder and it says start recording when I mouse over it. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to bring up a recorder for me. And that recorder will allow me to basically string together lots of those different actions that we just looked at uh, and I can do it all at once. So what I'm going to do is click this drop down here and I want to find that same window that says Automation Anywhere Labs dash login dash Google Chrome. It might take you a second to find that if you've got a bunch of applications open already. Um, so click that. If you don't have that window open, just relaunch that page and then you'll, you'll have it and you can hit refresh here. But I'm going to click on this Universal Recorder. Now, the Universal Recorder is running and it's basically just watching everything that I do. So just like we saw before with those red boxes being drawn everywhere when I move my mouse, I'm seeing that exact same thing. So I'm going to click on email address. I'm going to fill in uh, user at automationanywhere.com. Uh, I'll click here for the password and I'll fill in that same password that we talked about before, automation123 with a capital A, and then I'll click sign in. Cool. So this time it said 18 seconds. Obviously, I type much more slowly than uh, the bot was able to go before. But back on my recorder, I'm going to hit finish. Now, notice that we now have three new actions that are showing up in both our flow view and our list view here. And if I click on them, we basically just recreated the exact same thing we had done before, but we did it much more quickly using the recorder. Now we do see a red yield sign on one of our actions. And again, that's because it recognized that this particular field is a password. It probably should be treated as a credential. So, hey, I'm just highlighting that to make sure you look at it. Um, again, we're gonna just fill in insecure string here. We'll type in automation123. We'll hit save. That will get rid of that little red error or yield sign. And now I'm going to hit run again. And let me close that window just so we make sure we have a new one. I'll hit run. So this will do the exact same thing that we did before. It's going to launch our web page. It's going to, uh, then the bot will start to actually do the login. And so it's going to fill in the email address, fill in the password, and then click the sign in button. And this time it took 0.9 seconds. Cool. So that's your very first bot build. I hopefully you're able to keep up with me. Hopefully you were able to do the exact same thing. Again, all of the resources for this are in the description below. So if you want to get the link to the other video to set up your bot agent, if you want to get to the link to uh, this exercise page, that will be there as well. Let me know how you did. How did your bot work? How did it go? Hopefully you found this easier than you expected. Bot building can be a lot of fun. There's a lot of really great stuff that you can automate. It just takes some practice, it takes getting into the software, and it takes getting hands-on. My name is Micah Smith. This has been AA Illustrates, building your very first Automation 360 bot. Go be great.